Mm. So this is a direct quote, okay, and this might make Dragons fans feel a little bit better about themselves, about what they're going to get from Lachlan Ilias, about his time at the Rabbitohs. This is from Adam Reynolds defending Lachlan Ilias, okay? So I'll, I'll be as quick as I can. There's a couple of paragraphs here. Uh, I, I feel for Lockie, and it's never easy taking over from a player who was there for 10 years, won a grand final, and just been in a grand final. So this is Reynolds talking about himself as the skipper and halfback of the Rabbitohs against Penrith in the grand final. Mm. He goes on to say, the pressure and the expectation from the get-go was always going to be a lot greater compared to another halfback. I don't know if they've got the right game plan he wants to play. The game plan they have now is the one implemented when I was there, which involves playing on the ball and creating space for your outside men. That was something I could do really well for Cody and Latrell and other players. I see Lockie as a bit more of a runner, but he's been thrown in and asked to play that role. So that's Adam Reynolds. You can't get a better expert analysis of Ilias' time at South and how he was treated than the bloke they banished to Brisbane because they thought he was too old. Mm. And we're talking about Adam Reynolds, the halfback who won a comp for them in 2014 after 40 years. Was it 40? Yep. Yeah. Was it something like that? And it's like Adam Reynolds is never leaving the club. He was born around the corner. He grew up running around the streets in Redfern, chipping and chasing over blokes, kicking a footy. They got rid of Adam Reynolds for Lachlan Ilias a 20-year-old that had played one NRL game before that and expected him to be Adam Reynolds. Mm. And where was the support for him through that period? There was so much upheaval and, and so much um, media space about um, Demetrio's job and what's happening with the players and Sam Burgess leaving and all this other stuff. Um, but I, I feel like it was poignant to, to bring up that quote from Adam Reynolds because that's the greatest Rabbitohs halfback potentially of all time talking about the guy that replaced him and the club getting mm. it wrong. Yeah. Anything else? Uh, no, no, I'm sorry. I, I'm, I, I'm just so used to you continuing on, Kurt. So I, I just no, assume no, there no. was... No, no, mate, but I'll, <laughs> let's play on, play on. I, I, I just feel like that's, um, yeah, it's just, it's just another piece of the puzzle for the Dragons, isn't it? And I know, yeah, there's... Like Lomax and Hunter being moved on, and you can make the argument that they were the Dragons' two best last year. But I, I just think with with this signing, it's it's just a much more balanced side. I think the Dragons have a much better spine now. I think with Gutherson at fullback, um, yeah, with Ilias and Flanagan in the halves, Damian Cook at hooker, little as that utility off the bench. Who Shane Flanagan was saying in again one of his various interviews he was doing that little would play a little bit of thirteen as as a running running back rower. Uh, uh, next season as well. It just seems like a more, yeah, I think it's a more balanced, balanced side the Dragons have, have, have brought in. And, and yeah. So, sorry, Jack, did, did he, did he say that, that Little would play that role or, or was it Cook? You know, he said Littlewood. Yeah. Um, oh, wow. Yes. Okay. I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised. Cook, I, I wouldn't got be su- power. He's got the running game. Oh, that's weird. I wouldn't be surprised if both of them play um, mm. a, a top of 13 kind of, of running role. And I don't think it necessarily means that Little's going to be out there making, yeah, ten, 10 runs and 35 tackles no. in, his, in his kind of 40 or 45 minute spell. But yeah, I think he's he's just kind of got um, a bit of versatility with, with the players. He also kind of mentioned that, that Cook and uh, Little were players that could fill in in the centres if there was injuries like what happened last year with Moses Suli on Anzac Day and that kind of stuff, which I thought was, was an I- interesting take on it um but yeah like i i think Ilias is is uh is the perfect signing uh f- for the dragons there there wasn't much out there and i think to get a player of his caliber like when you think and i don't i don't mean any disrespect by this but when you think at this time last year or maybe even even closer to to the start of the 2024 season where the dragons had to kind of scramble and get jesse marshke who has now gone back to the north sydney bears so you can assume that he'll more than likely spend uh, the season in new south wales cup um 
that yeah they, they had to really scramble just to get a, a halfback and it was a guy that yeah did fill in and, and and did an okay job for the dragons at times um but really was a was a career reserve grade halfback to to have an upgrade on on someone like Ilias that was around um that's yeah that's played in in semi-finals that's yeah played over 50 games of first grade i think it's a it's a huge yeah it's a huge uh tick in in the in the box for the dragons in terms of 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 signing a, a quality seven um yeah i think as as an attacking player i think you summed it up perfectly, Kurt, when you when you read that quote from um, from Adam Reynolds about yeah, his his running game is dangerous, his kicking game is dangerous, and and hopefully yeah, the Dragons make a few tweaks to their attacking systems, and him and Kyle Flanagan can get some reps under their belt and, and really combine because that's the that's the key moving forward, but. I'm excited about both of them because, yeah, I think what we saw from Kyle Flanagan last year is not what we're going to necessarily see in, in 2025 because the reins have kind of been released a little bit. He's not kind of playing second fiddle to, to Ben Hunt anymore. So, yeah, maybe Kyle Flanagan is a bit more of the chief playmaker. We see Lachlan Ilias uh, show a little bit of his running game. It might be the, the other way around. I think that's what that's what kind of excites me um, uh, uh, about this. Do you, do you have any thoughts yourself on, on the attacking influence that Lachlan Ilias you think will bring to the Dragons next season? Um, yeah, I, I think, like you said, Reynolds um, kind of um, touched on that a, a bit there in that quote. But I, I, I think as a pair, as partners, um, they're not the flashiest. They're, they're certainly not a top four halves partnership. They're not, they're not top eight. But we don't know what they are. But well, Chamis, will Michael, make... well, t- I'll touch on it later. But Michael Chamis, the journalist, said that he thought they were the worst uh, com- half combination in the comp. <laughs> well, yeah, which I'll, paper, I'll talk about because there's more. There's more context to what he said as yeah, well. Yeah, but they will make each other better players, and and that's what this team needs in 2025. So, um, and I don't care what anyone says. Um, Cole Flanagan was really good for the Dragons in 2024. Um, and kind of offset Ben Hunt when he did get the chance to to to, to kind of push the team downfield. I I think Kyle Flanagan definitely has a bit more of the controlling um, running of, of the team um, in that old school way. Where when when I grew up playing football, your halfback kind of um, floated around the field and, and got up the the, the the forwards and slapped on the ass and said, "Come on, get here, mm. get there, move there, do this, do that." I think that will allow Ilias to, to sit back and, and pick when he goes or when he does see something. Uh, and I've, I've already been saying, um, and, and I kind of touched on it there, the Dragons look much better. And it was only in small snippets that we saw it. But when Cole Flanagan did um, uh, do a bit more of that build-up and, and out-and-out playmaking and, and push the team around the field and get them downfield, that relieved Ben Hunt of a bit of that stress because Ben Hunt is not that player. Um, the Dragons went away from that for, for massive portions of the year, and I think it would have helped them a little bit if, if, if they kind of skewed a little bit more back towards Flanagan and a bit more of that controlling, slowing it down, speed, speeding it up with, with um, um, you know, a, a, you know, a couple of steps that, 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 that we're talking about, um, not just repetition up and down the field, but but your um, the speed you're playing at um, as well. So Ilias, Ilias will fill that role, and, and I think they will, they will, they will appreciate each other very quickly. I, I think, um, I think it's a good combination. But it, but again, if you look at it on paper, yet yeah, yeah, it's um, that that's the, the the question mark along with maybe the front row rotation as well for the mm. Dragon. Um, but at the end of the day, as long as they play. Uh, and understand that their roles, they're going to be able to release guys like Holmes and Gutherson, and and and, and it's twofold. Those guys will help them as well. So uh, my question to you, Jack, I was just trying to quickly Google it. Um, mm. I, I can't remember, but Flanagan played uh, left side in 2024 with Ben Hunt on the right. Yeah, Flanagan is a right foot kicker in general. Plays, you not? Yeah, that's right. So I. I, I think Flanagan needs to get to the other side of the field as well. Mm. I, and that I'd will, love to. I'd be... love to see them both them them play both oh, sides yeah, yeah, personally, 100%. like we've spoken about. But yeah, I don't know if that that doesn't seem to really happen in the modern game, does it? No, no. But but but, but good coaches coach for the players they've got. I, I'd love to see Flanagan a bit more on the other side of the field if he's a right foot kicker because that gives him an, an extra couple of uh, couple of steps to to get his best kicks in. 
um, which will make them better as well because Ben Hunt's kicking game was was fairly average in, in mm. general play anyway. So um, I, I think in the in the realms of the, the players they've got for next year and, and the signings they've made, I think Dragons fans and Red V podcast listeners listeners can kind of take a breath and, and just relax because they're, they're both good players that understand.